Hello Matrix and welcome to the last part of this very fun paper you guys wrote. I think it was quite interesting and um, a little bit you know, challenging there and there but overall a little bit fair. I think you guys got tested at the same time they gave you some easy marks to pick so I wouldn't qualify it as too difficult but probably I would say okay for an exam especially a supplementary exam so you expect people to have covered a lot of the work and therefore to be more aware of what are the requirements anyway let's look at this question 9 before we waste too much time Okay, we don't have much time on our hands, so it's just question 9 and 10, all right? So question 9 says, sketched below is the graph of f of x. Now, look at our f of x. What do we notice here? What you will notice is that the coefficient of x cubed is 1. So it means our a is 1 and in essence our a is greater than zero so when a is greater than zero what do you expect our graph to look like it starts off increasing and ends increasing so we expect to see something like that is that what we see yes we do so there are no manga manga business over there so always make a habit of inspecting what this looks like of course this tells you that there is that quadratic portion of it Okay, it says now the x-intercepts of f are at 3 and 0. So we can see the, that that is our x-intercept. And m, where m lies in the negative axis. So they're already telling us where m is. So it's not a fluke. So we are told k is the y-intercept. Okay, so... And C point K is also indicated. So there's the Y intercept. Therefore M and N are the turning points. So when an intercept becomes a turning point, we know we have equal roots there. So that is very important thing to note. Alright. So not a big deal. So it says now show that the equation of F is given by. So they're already telling you where you're going. So this is one of the easiest because they should not actually tell you where you're going so that if you go wrong, then you can cry. All right, so easy. So we're going to just answer this one on the fly as well. So let's see what is the story here. Come on, why does this thing look so distant anyway? So we are dealing with uh, question nine. All right, so I'm not going to indicate from which paper. You already know. All right, so 9.1. I know that my f of x is given as x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus c. All right. I already know that my c is the y-intercept, right? Which is minus 3. But I don't know if that will help me, so I'm not going to rush here. I also know that here my a is equal to 1. So my a is positive, so that is easy. But because I've been given two roots where there's equal roots at some point, I'm going to use the root form. I know that f of x can be expressed as a into x minus the first root, right, whichever it is, and then x minus the second root. But we know that there's equal roots on the second root, so we can square that. So this is that. So this tell us now that, well, our f of x equals a. We saw that it is 1, so we just simply write this. It's going to be x minus the first root, 
we only know the three so if it was positive so inside it's negative then it's x minus this root which we don't know so I'm just gonna keep it as root 2 then through this point k which is our y-intercept it's 0 and minus 3 this is such that ooh, what are you doing this is such that minus 3 equals 0 minus 3 to 0 minus r2 all squared so we're solving a eh? which implies what minus 3 equals here we're going to have minus 3 into r2 squared because when you square that it becomes positive so that is the case this also implies now I divide by r2 I mean sorry by minus 3 so this r2 squared equals 1 because minus 3 divided by minus 3 is 1 so I take the square root sometimes it's my position is killing me I know I already write terribly so this implies that r2 right is going to be equal to plus or minus 1 but we know that this r2 lies in the negative x-axis therefore our r2 here is only going to be minus 1 so this tells us that here we are at minus 1 okay not a big deal so what do we do now we can say um, it therefore concludes that my f of x equals x minus 3 into x. Now when it's negative it's going to be plus 1 squared. We just work it out here. x minus 3 and then we deal with this one. It's going to be x squared plus 2x plus 1. Nah, not a problem so we multiply there we get x cubed we multiply here it becomes 2x squared plus x and then we multiply that one we get minus 3x squared minus 6x okay minus 3 okay so you can already see our constant is coming back so we have x cubed this guy and that guy so we get here uh, minus x squared okay and then that guy and that guy I get minus 5x minus 3 and that's the answer that they asked me to look for so it is exactly that way all right so this is easy again if you missed uh, my video on the cubic function please have a look at it I think it's very nice uh, that you do look at it and you will learn as much of what you need and I think this question has a lot of that in it all right okay so I even explained to you how you can use other pieces of information to get the equation of your cubic function so this is five marks all right not a big deal so I do think here what is the story here I would mark you here for correct substitution and this substitution and then picking out that root form and then of course correct substitution back and then the answer so I think that five marks is pretty easy to get all right let's keep going so now we have 9.2 upon us 9.2 says calculate the coordinates of n so we know that n is the x in I mean sorry is the turning point so if we consider this a turning point okay it should be there so we want to read off what would that be on the x-axis okay not a problem so for turning points we know we want um, so we know that n is a turning point is a 
turning point such that the first derivative of x must be equal to 0, isn't it? Yes. And now we take the first derivative here, it's going to be, this implies that 3x squared minus 2x minus 5 derivative of a constant is naught. Alright, so we solve for x here. I always attempt to factorize using the PAF method, but I know how to do it quicker. So I know here I'm going to have 3x and x over there. These brackets are unequal, but I want this one to be negative. So what are we going to do here? So we literally want this one to be plus 1, right? And then this one as minus 5. So that I can have plus 3 minus 5, it gives me minus 2. Minus 1, uh, minus 5 times 1 is minus 5. 3 times x, I mean 3x times x gives me that. So this is sorted. Therefore, I know here x is going to be 5 over 3. Or x equals minus 1. As you could tell that they were equal roots at minus 1. So it's coming back. But now I'm not interested in this one. Because it's 0 anyway. So we can say therefore f at 5 over 3 because that's what I'm interested in. So you know when you're doing that you're substituting into that formula. So I'm not going to do that. You know that you have to put it into that formula. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it in. So what we have here oops, um, 5 over 3 um, cubed all right. Whoa, what are you doing? What are you doing? Minus into 5 over 3. So I have a bit of a headache. I didn't sleep so well. I, w I woke up because of hunger. And this headache is bugging me. Oh, wait. Why are these mistakes bugging me now? They must leave me alone. I don't believe doch. I'm trying to finish this thing so that I can focus on paper 2, which is my favorite anyway, but again, not the rest of it. But ah, it's not a big deal. So I get this big number here. So it's minus 256 over 27. So I know I was looking for n, and as you can tell, n has a positive x value and a negative y value. So I know here I'm sitting at 5 over 3. And it tells me that my corresponding y value here, let's just do this one, nice and easy. Sometimes this thing likes to mess with me. So you can see that this is minus, what, 256. Over 27, okay? So that is the story over there, so not a big one, not a big deal. So you can conclude that N is given by this situation here. 5 over 3 is 2, minus 2, 5, 6, over 27. All right. So that was 5 marks again. you a lot of marks. But I think making this statement was important. The actual derivative, the factors. And I think um, getting that value and this one is all you need. Uh, I mean, putting this together is already what you calculated, so 5 marks is fine. So as they said in the rules, that the answer does not necessarily give you marks. Because, I mean, look at it, getting marks there in the wax. All right, so that is easy. Not a big deal. So do we want to move? Maybe not. Uh, 
let's just try to answer the rest of these and of these questions here maybe some of them here so we have 9.3 divided into 9.3.1 so 9.3 says for which values of x will f be less than 0 of course when we say f less than 0 it means it must be below the x-axis so where is this graph below the x-axis uh, this graph is below the x-axis between m and that point 3 right and beyond but at m it is exactly on the x-axis so that doesn't count it's not included but in between we can see the graph is below the x-axis and also there so we must say x must be less than minus 1 that's one of the answers so x must be less than minus 1 or x must be what between these two so it must be less than 3 but greater than minus 1 remember minus 1 is not included right so you can write it that way so this format usually is two marks and then you should be getting three marks here but they decided you're gonna get one one all right so you know here you have two options um, you can say interval notation this is your options x is an element of uh, what x is an element of negative infinity up to minus 1 union minus 1 up to 3 okay so you can do that so you would get a mark for those two so it captures everything uh, I don't think uh, the set builder notation works very well in this case so the inequality works or the set this interval notation uh, the set builder notation becomes a bit cumbersome for this one so I would not prefer to use it as an option at all so 9.3.2 what do we have here they're saying that f is increasing for which values of x is this increasing and then of course we know that the turning points it's stationary points so when is it increasing we want this graph to have a positive gradient so it has a positive gradient in this section building up to that minus one but minus one is not included because it's stationary there and then this one is a negative gradient so it's out so that one is a positive gradient so it's in so again it should be beyond this x value so I think here inequalities are also good here we know that uh, x must be less than minus 1 or x must be greater than 5 over 3 okay because they said for which values of x so no big deal here again you can try to do this one as an interval notation you can say x is an element of negative infinity up to minus 1 none of them are included union uh, here you're starting with 5 over 3 going up to positive infinity so you can do that so I mean two marks so you can get your marks there or your marks there depending on what you did again the set built notation would not really be the best for that one so uh, yeah not a big deal so that was two marks not one mark all right so 9.3.3 .3. so let's move i'm a bit sleepy man i want to go back to bed i know it's late but i mean it's during the day but i'm tired man then maybe when i wake up later i can do paper too but not all maybe some questions but i'll choose euclidean my favorite so let's start with that one then yeah move on hear me talking about paper two we're still doing paper one sir please don't be in a hurry You're gonna kill us f be concave up so concave up is always beyond the point of inflection so where is it is this the point of inflection well we don't know 
but we know that look for any graph any cubic graph to be concave up the second derivative must be greater than zero that's all we know when that second derivative registers positive y values this is when the graph is concave up all the time so let's just use that it's much easier and much more compact so for concave up so you can just say concave up it is such that the second derivative of x is greater than zero so I just like that because it just leads me on now I already know what was my first derivative it was like that isn't it so I'm going to take the derivative of a derivative so when I multiply 2 in front it becomes 6x minus 2 Ooh, greater than 0 okay not equal to 0 derivative of a constant is 0 so what is that so it tells me this is 6x greater than 2 when you take that 2 over therefore x must be greater than 1 over 3 a third because 2 runs to itself twice I mean 3 times to 6 so this tells me my point of inflection is not that y intercept so is a third I don't know how is a third in this situation so let's just imagine it's here let us just imagine let's just give it a nice little thingy there so that we can see it let's just do something what is 5 over 3 anyway this is 1 comma 7 1 comma 7 so maybe a third we can make this one the third over here just one centimeter all right now we know that ah my lord so don't worry I'm going to be breaking things here so I it tells me that my point of inflection is over there okay so this means this portion of my graph is concave up okay going all the way is concave up no problem all right so that is concave up and then uh, this one below this value here my graph is concave down as you can see the cup is turned upside down it's pouring everything into the ground yeah. so it's very nice and you work on these things nice and slowly during practice because now when they, they try to give you a curve you're like okay I can take the bike through the curve no problems knees downs and elbows sometimes the head as well but don't panic when you see something because you're gonna drop the bike just let it go anyway what am I talking about now that's fine so we know that we've answered this question nice and easy because we can already tell here this is a third okay so We've already answered it so we worked it out instead so for me doing the actual derivative and the answer is just enough but you could easily just write this one down so you don't need to show how you determined it sometimes so it's pretty easy actually they gave three marks to show that yeah you had to really show how you worked it out so I think that statement becomes gold or golden okay so now they decided to give you a bit of a situation here so I mean now six marks you know it's not gonna be child's play but let's see determine the maximum and then vertical distance so we want the maximum but that is also vertical between the graphs of f and its first derivative in the interval so let's see what do they mean by that interval first let's picture what will this look like um, 
in essence, let's see, what is this thing anyway? Minus 2, 5, 6, divide by 27, what is that? This is minus 9,5, roughly. Okay, it's 9,5, not a problem. So we know that the first derivative is this guy. So don't forget what you worked out, because it just solves your pain. You don't want to be going around in circles. So our first derivative here is this one. So we simply do the intercepts. We know that these intercepts, they were shown here when we factorized. And they are essentially what? The x-coordinates of the turning point. So if we are to picture what this graph should look like, let me look for a nice color. Um, I want a really nice color. But I don't really see one. Yeah, isn't it? Let's see. Does it show? Yeah, it does show better. So I know that this graph is going to be here and there. But now what is its y-intercept? It's minus 5. So it's in between this point and that point. So I can just choose any point of my liking. If I'm going to say this is 3, so what does that mean? If I make this one 3 centimeters, this is like 2,5. So it means like the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yay, when? Ah, that's not the same thing. I think I'm going to go. So this is 1, 2, 3. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So my minus 5 is over here if I'm trying to use scale. This is terrible. Ha. Huh. Eh, 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 eh. That is something else. Okay. Not a problem. So, I mean, I don't really care about its maximum value. So all I know is that my A was greater than 0. So when A is greater than 0 here, the graph is looking up. It's concave up, isn't it? So, of course, it will come to some point where it is directly below the point of inflection because this point of inflection becomes its x-coordinate of its turning point. So, going through here a little bit. So, maybe here. I don't know where, but I'm going to just choose a spot for myself. So, I'm not going to bother myself with a lot of things. So I'm going to do that. So let's draw this graph nice and easily. So all I know is that this graph is supposed to be turning here. And it's going to do it rather sharply. Ah, doch, don't do this. Maybe I'm going too far. Yeah, doch, this is not nice now. Okay. I didn't like that, but it's not a big deal, so. It's not a big deal, so it's not gonna be as nice as I want it to look. Ach doch, why? Why? Okay going to try and shape it. Sometimes you just keep being patient. And you just keep working your magic. You work your magic in the room. Hey! Hey! <laughs> my daughter. Oh. Yeah. Hey, my daughter. I'm glad no more cool. Just get cali. Just get very little. And I go right to Lila. So this is what we want to see, right? Now, we are being told we want this vertical distance between the two. But now, here's the thing again. Where is this third? Now it starts to make sense why they're giving us this, rest this restriction. So the region they are looking for is below zero, but 
above minus 1. So we know that this is this third. Did I say it's a third? I don't know what it is. Yeah, let's not lie to ourselves. But all I know is uh, this distance here is going to be somewhere here. Because it must be less than zero, it can't be zero. So they've already restricted my zero, so it can be there, it can be there, it can be there, but it's any one of those lines, okay? So we want the greatest. And if you're looking at these lines, maybe these two look more or less the same size, so maybe they, that would be the distance. I don't know. Let's find out. But what we are looking for is this spot right here. So the restriction for us is giving us this region. There's a region. This is our feasible region or region. So this is our feasible region. So we don't want to go anywhere else but in this region. So that means, yes, there are plenty of other areas. We can see the distance between this and that, and maybe here and you know wherever else, and maybe also there. So they told us exactly where to look. So this is the feasible region where we are supposed to look at. What would be the maximum? So we can tell here that in this region, the graph above the other is that graph of F. It's above the graph of the first derivative, so I forgot to label this one. This is the first derivative over there. So technically, we're taking this first derivative from that. All right, not a big deal, so I don't want to take forever. I don't know why I started stalling here. All right. So, not an issue, so let's keep working, guys. So 9.4, you see it's not exactly unassailable. So if you watch that video on my uh, cubic function, you will see that I showed how you can lay these together at once, together with the second derivative. And of course, the second derivative will do that. It will cut there and go that way and come down like that, okay? So, yeah, that is the story. So you see, sometimes when you do things, it's not unnecessary because they can bring it. So you just want to know everything there is to be known in the nicest way possible, of course. So, now this vertical distance, we're going to say it's going to be in terms of x, right? Yeah, should be like that. So this d in terms of x, we know we're taking f is going to be equal to f of x minus f prime x, is it? it? Because this one is below the other. So you always take what is below from what is above. Great. So let's see what is that. f of x, we found out that it was x cubed minus x squared minus 5x minus 3. So minus what did we find this derivative to be? We got here 3x squared ne, uh, minus 2x, right? Minus 5. And of course the constant would not count. Okay, let's work this out. This is x cubed minus x squared minus 5x minus 3. We distribute the negative in minus 3x squared plus 2x plus 5. Okay, this is x cubed over here. Then x squared minus x squared minus 3x is minus 4x squared. Okay, and then 5 and 2 there minus 5 plus 2 is going to be minus 3x. Okay. Ah, then minus 3 plus 5 is going to be plus 2. Okay, so this is that distance in terms of x. But now we, we know that for maximum distance, it is such that 
d prime of x must be equal to 0, isn't it? For maximum or minimum, that is the story. What does this imply? That means the derivative of what we found. It's going to be 3x, 3x squared, and then here, minus 8x, minus 3. All right? That one of a constant is 0, so it's out. So that is what we have. Fortunately, we cannot divide throughout, so we just factorize. It always works, trust me. When it doesn't, you have other options, completing a square or the square, and also using your general quadratic formula, but I'm not the fan. Me, I like to try things out always. I always force matters until they agree. <laughs> like when you want a woman or a girl back in the days, you would break that arm or that wrist until she goes like, yes. Yes, even if she doesn't want to. <laughs> they just said yes. And then, of course, yeah, you have what you want. Your girl. Anyway, so, you know how it goes. If a guy's not looking, the girl goes fishing, right? She, do, she does all the things that make him look at her. So you do that with these quadratics. You force your way. If you don't, hmm. Not gonna be nice. So now what do I want? I want minus eight. So I must have three here. And I must have one. Now I want three times three to give me minus nine so that when I add one, I get minus eight. So this is how it should look. Therefore, I know my x is going to be minus a third or x equals three. Now this is where this restriction comes in, okay? This, therefore, tells us that our x is minus a third. It can't be 3, okay? Cannot be 3 because we were restricted by that domain. Sometimes certain things only make sense at the end, not at the beginning. Sometimes you have to think about it at the beginning. It just depends on the type of question, really, and what it demands for you to get it done. All right, so now that we know that this x must be, we can say, therefore, the maximum distance. The maximum distance in terms of x. Oh, no, no, no. In terms of what? Minus a third. Okay. Is equal to. Now we substitute into that formula. Don't forget this formula. We derived it so we can work with it. So we're going to have here minus a third cubed minus 4 into minus a third squared minus 3 into minus a third All right, plus 2. What do I get? So you just use your calculator here. You don't want any problems please don't allow problems to be your friend in this one this is the easiest question that sometimes looks complicated but it's actually not at all complicated but you just need to plan so the approach is guys i, I hope you can uh, I, I hope you get in comfortable with these approaches because I'm all about approaches, not necessarily the answers. Sometimes the answers can be wrong. That doesn't phase me away, or it doesn't phase me off, or it doesn't send me off. All it just does is uh, I'm getting 68 over 27, which is going to be 2,5 uh, to two, two decimal places. Okay, you can leave it as a fraction if you want. But I like to just do the distance in a more sensible way. Okay, so scalar quantity, so don't worry about vectors and stuff like that, whether it's a rational number thing or not. Ah, leave me alone. So that is what we have here. So this is great. Now, six marks. Of course, I think this substitution and this derivation 
and of course this statement as well as that actual derivative and this guy here how many marks here already one two three four five yo 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 I can go six maybe I'm giving too much in one space ne yeah 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 but I think it's critical because someone could have decided to do that and do the wrong thing let's just stop this one and give your mark there so one two three four five six six marks so this is the 23 marks goodness they decided to just throw you with marks this was a shower of marks I mean these things are easy but sometimes they can be challenging if you don't picture what you are talking about so now in essence we know that ah we got our third here when we made it to one so we're going to do the same thing and say oh dog this distance is actually not where we thought it was but it's right here so this is this distance here so it is that distance this one it says that one is the maximum all right not a big deal so we got it anyway all right so let's move on to this section which is a gambler's section I mean if you gamble you like taking chances at the casino this is for you I'm really not that guy so this one always tries to sink me but I found a way of surviving it because if it is mathematics man you always will figure it out so work as many examples and problems of this kind so that you become comfortable with it it's nothing really now it says flags from four African countries and three Europa European countries were displayed in a row so this is a row so this row they can be put in any order during the 2021 Olympics okay now it says uh, determine the total number of possible ways in which all seven again they're giving you a clue here all seven flags so they're not telling you African against uh, European so here you are dealing with just all seven all right could be displayed so that is fine this is not a big 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 deal uh, let's just start on a new question let's just do it on a new page you are told on the instruction start each question on a new page right okay not not anymore you guys are give it space to work with okay not a problem we used to be told start each question on a new page so that everything follows nicely all right so we've got 10.1 we are told here we have african flags that are for you know nazia pepezela lezizinto go pepezela but not pepezela yomqomboti ne ezla lidi wakqobe pepezela it means good of cobot the South African rural beer. I will not say traditional beer, it's a rural beer, man. I don't know why people say traditional. It has nothing to do with tradition, it's just alcohol. Homemade alcohol. Anyway, so they are these African countries. So we know that here we're talking about our AC. Okay, African countries or alternating currents here. Yeah? And then Let's do the, the European, the European in another color. Okay, you know these guys are wealthy, so I'm going to make them green anyway. So there's our European, maybe Denmark there, Scotland, and maybe England, you know, the wealthier ones in Europe, or maybe Germany, I don't know. Again, this is the European EC, which is like the Eastern Cape, so European countries. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there are seven these things. Yeah, let's zoom out. It's too close now. Can you see that? Yes, you can. 
All right, so now we, are, we want to answer 10.1.1. It says the total number of ways. So again here, we just have a pool of seven. So we're just going to have seven spaces. Always think of seven spaces. And in each case, you're multiplying those possibilities. So if we just pick any flag at random, we have how many choices? Seven choices initially. So once we've made our pick, we are done. Sorry, we were not told that um, we can repeat. So again, it's very difficult to repeat when you have a limited number, right? So we are told here yeah, that seven, once we made a pick, we have six choices for the next space. And then once we make those two picks, we have now five choices for the third space. Once we've made those three picks, we now have four spaces for one, two, three, four, five, goodness, six, seven. I'm wondering now what's happening. All right, so once we've made those four picks, we have three choices for that uh, fifth spot. Once we've made those five choices, we have two choices for that sixth spot and one choice for the last one. So what this is equal to is seven factorial. And then what is that? So you go here. You go like seven shift in that one. It gives us 50, 40. So it's 5,040 possible ways. So ways of display. Ah, doch. Why do I like to say things? I Leave me alone. I was taught, no, don't just throw answers that are hanging. They must be connected to the question, right? To show that you're willing to answer. You're not just doing it with an attitude. Answering with an attitude was not allowed. So they're giving us two marks here. So I think to show that this is that and that is okay for the two marks. Easy. So this is fundamental counting principle, you know. So if you have missed the videos that I showed you guys, I think I've done about three to four question papers where I was doing uh, specifically probabilities and fundamental counting principles so that you make it your own. You must own it. So it says now, determine the probability that the flags from the African countries were displayed next to each other. So now there's a bit of a restriction here. All right, so let's think about these African country flags together. So they are four in total. So this is one, two, three, four. And we know we're going to multiply those possibilities. Ne? So if we're talking, these are the African ones. Think of them as African. So we have four choices for the first spot. We have three choices for the second spot. Once we've made those ones, we have two spots. I mean, two choices for that uh, third spot. And then we're going to have one choice for this one. But remember, these ones are side by side. So in any order, so they can be put in four factorial ways. But then we will have these three spaces for these European ones. Okay, these European ones. Now, but here's the thing. You can still put this one here. It can also be here. It can also be here. So remember, this can be here, can be there, can be there, it can be there. So how many possible ways can we put this arrangement? There's four choices. You consider this one is a single choice this time, but don't forget what it happens inside. So it's going to be one, two, three, four factorial ways that we can put this. So we know here what we can do here. So, so this is going to be the four factorial for so the probability that the African, countries, the African countries are displayed next to each other. I'm going to just do this one. It's going to be 4 factorial for this being side by side multiplied by the 4 factorial ways 
of how we can arrange this. One, two, three, four factorial ways. Because we can see it can either be here, one, it can be here, two, it can be here, three, it can be here, four. So either way, they didn't say the European ones must be side by side. Okay, so what was the total? That was 7 factorial. So what is that probability? So I'll just say the probability is that. I'm not going to state what it is. Sometimes it's get, it, it gets a bit complicated. So we have 4. Okay, let's just do this one correctly. 4 factorial times 4 factorial. We can just say 4 factorial squared if you want. Alright, divide by 7 factorial. So you do that. Yo, 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 what? Mm-mm. Cafe is in doing as going to your app. 4 factorial times 4 factorial. Close bracket. Divide by 7 factorial. So let me do the right thing. So I get... 4 over 35. Alright. Not a problem. So what is that? Uh, why this answer looks strange though? Hmm? Did I do the right thing? Yeah, doch. So sometimes these things can be... Oh, yo, 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 yo. Yeah, man, I think it's fine. So let's just leave it like that and not complicate our lives. So you don't need to do... Let's leave it here. It's fine. This is how it's going to be. With everything considered. Alright, so they were giving three marks. So I think here yeah, you get this and that. And then that one. And you cannot be marked for the total because you already knew it. Alright. Not a big deal. 10.2. What is our story here? So we are told A and B are two independent events. So you know when they talk independence, what is that? That is already telling you that the probability, this implies what? That the probability of A and B is equal to the product. So the product rule is true for this one. It's the product of A multiplied by the product of the probability of B. So this is what this means. But they're not telling us whether they are mutually exclusive or what or complementary. It doesn't really matter anyway. So we're told probability of A 0, 0,4, not a problem. Then the probability of A or B. Once you see this, you know that going to have to use the product, I mean the addition rule. So what does the addition rule say? It's P of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Okay, so we're going to have to use this. Of course, it's in the formula sheet, so don't forget it. So if you forgot it, then you are going to die alone, for sure. So let's see. What do we know? We don't know this, but we can express this one as the sky. So you see, sometimes knowing what is meant by a statement, it solves your pain for the next one, because you'll be like, ah, I'm going to put that there, because I already know this one. I don't know this. There will be two of the same, so there will be a common factor somewhere, and then I will work it out. All right, so we, we can do this. So we know that P of A or B from the addition rule is equal to the probability of A plus probability of B minus the probability of A and B. All right, so what do we know? We know that but P a and B is given by P of A oops no 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 times P of B why these are independent events how do we write independent goodness yeah ne? independent 
events. This implies what? That P of A or B is going to be given by probability of A plus probability of B minus the probability of A times the probability of B. So how nice is this? Because now we never have to worry about finding this. Because, I mean, we're looking for the same thing here. So we can substitute now. This one was 0, 0,88 equals. This one is 0, 0,4 plus probability of B minus 0, 0,4 times probability of B. Not a big deal. So what do we have here? We can transpose this one to that side, so we have 0, 0,88 minus 0, 0,4 equals. Here we have to take out a common factor, which is probability of B into, it's going to be 1 minus 0, 0,4. Okay, so what is the story here? Therefore, the probability of B is going to be equal to 0, 0,88 minus 0, 0,4, right? Divide by 1 minus 0, 0,4. Okay, so this was not too bad, 0, 0,88 minus 0, 0,4. So they're finding ways of tricking you away. So, I mean, you know how to use formulas from grade 10, making something the subject of the formula, so shouldn't be crying over this one. So they made this one easy. Usually this one gives me a headache. A serious headache. So this one is 0, 0,8, so I'm going to leave it like that. All right, so that is fine. So we got our probability of B, not a problem. So what are we going to say here now? Yo, but three marks buffet for this thing. Ah, hey, problematic people. So maybe here you're getting a mark at this point, okay? And for this substitution over here, and for the answer. Goodness, but this one should have been a bit more. It should have been a bit more. This interpretation is quite significant, but anyway, maybe they're marking it there. Yeah, it's fine. But maybe four marks nyan, I will. Uh, teacher I uh, got and I get among standard the standard five. I want have an so I can yeah OBE Cadillac two thousand and then yo turn on it's on your hump will in a gin on you. You send your neck is I rat in a gin on you. One in Kilega born a fellow or one or two to an eight on senior the door of the casual. All right. Enough of the nonsense. Let's finish this thing once and for all. Again, they're finishing you off with a big one. So I think whatever it is is going to be a bit of a challenge. I see the marks here. Usually these marks are very difficult to get in this question. So once they start giving you a story, you know, it's bad news. Okay, let's see how bad is this news. Can we take it or are we just going to run away from it? So it says there are 120 passengers on board an aeroplane, okay? Now, passengers have a choice between a meat sandwich, 
don't know whether you call it sandwich or sandwich. Some people read this as sandwich. I don't know where the D goes anyway. I don't really care about this silly pronunciations of these words. Sometimes these words are not exactly English. They are borrowed from some silly, okay, not silly, but from some other language. And therefore, how you pronounce them is a bit different from how they are written, okay? So whatever you say, meat, whatever, cheese, whatever. But now it says, well, we know for a fact that but more passengers will choose meat sandwich. Okay? Is it sandwich or sandwich? Sandwich. Amen. Oh, I don't know. I never knew how to pronounce this thing. In fact, I never even called it by name. I'd be like, can I have, a, can I have that? Can I have one of those? <laughs> I never say what it is okay yeah so but more passengers will choose meat sandwiches okay i don't know what that means but we're going to keep our eyes on the lookout because i don't think at this point we have to worry about that but it means something so we need to watch ourselves very clearly how we're going to use that piece of info it says there are only 120 sandwiches however they pronounce that so it's 120 sandwiches are available so yeah now we are working this statement like i said please make sure your english is not bad in terms of comprehension don't worry about pronunciation and eloquence in speaking you can bite your tongue as many times as you want when you speak english it's not your mother tongue right but don't make the error of not understanding English because that's how many people are going to communicate with you and you don't want to miss the strong points that they're making, okay? Or the crucial points that they're trying to put across to you. How are you going to say it back? Well, it's not a big deal. If you comprehend English, you're going to write it okay, all right? Uh, but to speak it may be a bit of a situation like with me. I don't know how to speak English properly or should I say in the best way that others actually are able to. But I know that I bite my tongue my way through and you're going to pick up wherever you can. <laughs> but I'll try to make my point. Uh, even if some prepositions are put sideways or where they don't belong and stuff like that, some words are complex and they're supposed to be separated. But an English speaker who comprehends English will understand you. But don't fail to understand them when they speak to you. So this is what it means. So English is important, please, for maths. Don't think maths is what you need only. You need your language, your vernacular, you need English and whatever other language you want to add. But because this is our means of communication in our exams, you want to make sure you don't leave any word ununderstood. So there are some words that are just there. You know, Zkapil. Zintiza sense. Everyone, abangneti abu. But asfun bangneti ngelitlaisha. Sifuna ongapambi. Okay, so there are only 120 sandwiches so that's the total of them to choose from okay now it says the probability that the first passenger chooses a meat sandwich i don't know how you read this but i'm gonna read it my way uh where's my yellow thing i don't know where it is but i'm going to have to highlight stuff like read. this is one of those questions you just want to make sure you've done all the hard work and it is one of the last ones because it's the most annoying type of a question when it comes. I, 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 I don't like it. But I've learned in life to put up with what I don't like, at least for the time that I need it for. And then when I don't, I forget about it. But try not to forget about it until you are done with your finals and you know you did well, then you may as well start forgetting about it. But trust me, these things are important. Part of research incorporates a bit of what is probabilities, talking of odds ratios and stuff like that. So you cannot forget this entirely because, you know, people are graduating, getting PhDs and stuff. 
honors you know all of those things so you're going to have to do research unfortunately so you may as well just know how to work this out and understand it as best as you can as annoying as it is even statistics in paper too is quite annoying and very simple at the same time but you want to understand its core principles because when you do research you're not going to be feffering around plagiarizing things you will just sit with your data and analyze it the best way you know how then do your write up and guess what you might just be the one who gets the best of all ah man i like to talk and i waste time in my speech ah, started dropping things anyway i'm trying to gather some energy for this question because ah man it's not the best question ever it's not the best question ever. So now it says calculate the probability that the first passenger will choose a cheese sandwich. Hmm. <laughs> well, 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 well. You see how detailed this thing is? You can tell that almost every word here means something. So you're going to be dead if you don't put some sense into this. All right, so the best way when you are given something like this, I like to do my tree diagram because it simplifies my life. So 10.3, the last ride. So I know here, there's two options here of this food choices here. We have a meat sand sandwich or sandwich sandwich or sandwich whatever you want to call that so this is going to be ms but it's not multiple sclerosis please we're not talking medical diseases here and cheese sandwich we're not talking about cs what could be cs hmm? i don't know man anyway whatever this is but it's not MS, it's not multiple sclerosis. Uh, maybe it's cancer of the spleen. <laughs> CS. This is not cancer of the spleen or cancer of the stomach, okay? Mm -hmm. Don't make that mistake. All right, so those are the two choices for now. And then, of course, we're talking about two people choosing here. So we don't really have to worry ourselves about the probability of the people themselves. But I think the sandwiches themselves are important. So the first pick can either be a meat sandwich or a cheese sandwich. Now we can have the second guy picking. The second guy pick can also follow this pattern. All right. So the second pick could be a meat sandwich or a cheese sandwich. This could be a meat sandwich or a cheese sandwich. Not a problem, not a problem. So now this is what we have. Now we've got to end here because we talked about two people here. We didn't talk about a lot. So what summarizes your story is that it is the probability that the first passenger chooses a meat sandwich and the second passenger chooses a cheese sandwich is 18 over 85. So we know that we are looking at two situations. We don't have to worry about all the 150. So we're just zooming in. So now what do we want? We want to know that the first passenger must choose the uh, cheese sandwich. So this is a bit situational, you know. I promise you this is a bit situational if you think about it. But let's first work out things on this diagram. Now, let's just say let, let the number of meat sandwiches be equal to x, OK? It also tells us now that our cheese sandwiches is going to be 120 minus x, OK? So you need to start thinking about these things. Because if you don't think about these things, it's going to kill you. This question will kill you. 
believe me, but when you think about these things in this manner, in a way you might survive. So if you're choosing a meat sandwich, so there's just X of them over 120. Ne? Great. Or how many of these ones is 120 minus X over 120, because the total was 120, ne? Yes. So that's what we have on this arm. Now, when we choose again, things change slightly. How do they change? So when they make the second pick, remember now of the x's, we lose 1. So the numerator becomes x minus 1 over. What is the total here? Now that we picked 1 already, out of 120, we remain with 119. So these are dependent events. So that would be 119 rands. Oh, 119 left okay and then if we go this route it would be exactly 120 minus x over but because we've already made the choice there will be 119 okay so that arm has that probability so work these things out please because if you don't hmm you're going to wish you did that is a promise not a threat okay so i don't do threats man i do promises promises only all right so let's look at this one let's say now we focused on this arm here what happens here now if we picked 120 minus x so already we have here a total of what if you're choosing a meat sang sandwich it's going to be x is it visible i think it is x over yeah ne, i don't think it's quite visible but let me trust that it is yeah I, I don't like it let's just stick with my blue here this is x over now remember we already made a pick here so this is going to be one one nine okay so, because, I mean, we didn't choose the meat sandwich as yet in this scenario. But if we've made the choice of the cheese sandwich, the second one being the meat sandwich, going to be the total of the meat sandwiches over the total that's left because that has already happened. So these are dependent events. Right. Now, here that we do this thing here. If, for example, we've already picked one here. So we're going to say... 120 minus x minus 1, which is simply 120 minus 1 minus x. So we're going to have here 119 minus x over. Um, let's say now we're picking another cheese one. So already we've made a pick here, so we have 119 left here. So that's what we have. So once you've worked your probabilities on your tree diagram, all is left is to put it together, which is fairly easy. Now, what did they tell us? They told us that the probability that the first passenger chooses a meat, so that means we're starting here, and then the second one chooses a cheese, so that is here. So that means we are going to focus on this arm here for this, for starting. So we're focusing on this arm. So this is what we are focusing on for status. And then they are telling us that that thing here is 1, 8 over 85. I don't know if it is visible, but I hope it is. Uh, so they told us that that is the probability we can work with. Okay, fine. We can work with this one and solve for x, right? Because once we solve for x, we are going to eventually come to this situation here. Okay, but this question is complex, guys. Now, the next question is asking that the first one, calculate the probability that the first passenger will choose a cheese sandwich. So it means from there, we're going to work our way either this way or that way. But all we know is the first one must be <laughs> a cheese sandwich for 
whatever happens but there's going to be two choices to consider so this thing is a bit technical believe me it's a bit technical so you need to think very clearly if you don't have the history diagram you can already imagine you are dead and we have not really accommodated this part that says but more passengers will choose a meet i don't know where it comes in but let's just keep working for now so let's work here we know here that p m s and c s okay now this is our section yeah c s is usually cesarean section yeah man what a nice one we're not cutting babies out of their mothers here we are doing maths so basically it's going to be what remember these are dependent events but again the product rule happens it says the probability of this and the probability of uh, this one now that this has this has happened or whatever or this one because that has happened ah man it's easy it's going to be the probability of m s multiplied by the probability of c s now that m s has occurred so i mean you know that story ne? but you don't have to show it anyway but remember this is not alone so this is why this one is showing that this is dependent on the fact that ah doch yeah this is the probability of cs this is our intersection now that multiple sclerosis is in this patient so if you diagnose this patient to be multiple sclerosis and oops you must do a cesarean section okay just being silly but this is where you could try and apply this not a big deal so what were we told uh, maybe i should have said this one is 118 so that i can substitute this one there and let it follow anyway so we were told that this one is 18 over 85 okay equals now what is that so pms now we know that we're dealing with the yellow arm so it was x over 120 multiply by this one now that a has occurred it is this part okay it's going to be 120 minus x over 119 great so we are done now we know that we have a nice equation here to work with so what i'm going to do i'm going to first sort this one out 18 over 85 equals so remember board mass says you uh, you have to first deal with multiplication or division so now here i don't see any factors that can cancel out so what i can do simply multiply numerators and denominators so here i'm going to have 120x minus x squared over 120 multiplied by 119 i used to know how to do these calculations in my head I think I'm going to revive that now that I'm working with you guys. Trust me, I know how to do these things. We didn't have calculators before. And we used to have a way of putting these, you know, on the board or on paper, but I used to do it in my head eventually. But I'll bring it back. Don't worry. Now that I have good fractions, I can do cross multiplication, right? Uh, this implies what? So this number multiplied by 18. Yo, up. What is that number? I tell you, man. Whatever it is. Um, this is 257,040. Okay. So this is 257040 and 70. That's what the old man would say. Okay, let's deal with this one um 85 times 120 i get 10 200 now that's going to be x minus 85 x squared so that's what i'm going to get here so i can already tell that ah what i can do here i can just transpose these things properly take this to that side all of it 
So this one becomes 85x squared in terms of their powers minus 10200x ne and then that one is plus 257040 equal to 0 so I want a quadratic here now are these things divisible by 85 let's check this one 10200 divide by 85 it's 120 okay 120 here so 257040 divide by 85 I get 3024 so I know here that I'm going to have plus 3024 equals to 0 here I'm going to have 120x and then this is x squared this is of course divide by 85 here that would be such that we have that quadratic now I know I can factorize this thing always try please always try guys it works sometimes sometimes it does not so you never know now I know I'm going to have x and x if the last term is positive and the middle term is negative both brackets are negative now you're going to have to try even numbers here but now this is quite a big number so 20 30 24 you can just say divide by say 16 for starters so I get 189 so 189 plus 16 is not 120 so this one is out so 30 24 divide by let's say 24 it's 126 so 126 plus 24 is not 120 so it's already out so 30 24 divide by say 32 I want a big number here 32 oops no it doesn't work so let's go back and remove 32 say 34 for example oops doesn't work uh, let's remove that and say 36 for example 84 so let's see what is 84 plus 36 it's 120 yeah, boo. so we're going to have here 84 and 36 so sometimes it's a bit of a gamble but like i said if you feel like it's overwhelming to test values and stuff because i mean you need to be comfortable but i showed you in my videos termed uh, mathematics in the classroom no 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 not that one but i think it was question two related materials sequences and series there were big numbers there so i showed you how to do this as i'm doing or Go to mode and find your quadratic and put the coefficients and then you solve. It will give you those factors. All right. Not a problem. So therefore, our x is either 36 or x is 84. Now, which one do we pick? Thankfully, this statement comes into our four. Now, it says, but more passengers will choose a meat sandwich. That means there has to be more meat sandwiches. So obviously it can't be less because if the meat sandwiches are 36, that would mean the, um, what you call, the cheese sandwiches will be 84. So now that means this is our answer and this one cannot be the answer for X because of that restriction. So now we can see uh, at the end, sometimes these restrictions can be accommodated at the very end sometimes at the very beginning so you don't know where you are going all right so now that we know x is this one therefore we know that the meat sandwich is of course is going to be 36 so this is effectively 36 when that is 84 okay so we've sorted this thing nice and easy nice and easy so now we want the probability that the first passenger will choose a cheese sandwich. Now, this one is this probability. Okay, that's exactly what we want. Ne. Because it doesn't say the, f the, the first 
chooses and then the second chooses which one but it just says the first one so basically I was wrong actually to picture this but what they wanted was this one now I'm looking at it nice and easy because the first person to pick is going to be 120 minus x over 120 so let's say therefore the probability now of a cheese sandwich just a cheese sandwich is going to be 120 minus 84 all over 120 let us see yay my battery is dead okay goodness I got too relaxed 120 minus 84 so I have four minutes here but so that's 36 divided by 120 so that is 3 over 10 maybe let's leave it like that and not do anything so I don't know where these marks are so I'll just say five marks and that marks the 13 marks of this question so my space is finished so I don't have a lot of space to work on so I hope you followed on uh, but because of time I cannot really try to fancy where those marks are all right guys that's the end of uh, our attempt so I hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, you're going to now bounce what you did against what I have shown here so I've done three videos so please be on the lookout for part one and two if you're just seeing part three which is this video otherwise if you are following on from part one just please continue to this part which is part three then you can see how your paper went in terms of paper one mathematics of course if I've made any mistakes that you can pick just let me know otherwise thank you for watching and please share the video with others wherever possible so that they can learn the same as you have Bye-bye.